The horse and groom. A groom used to spend whole days in curry combing and rubbing down his horse, but at the same time stole his oats and sold them for his own profit. Alas, said the horse, if you really wish me to be in good condition, you should groom me less and feed me more. Okay. So, a groom used to spend whole days in curry combing and rubbing down his horse, so I'm going to take curry combing as, you know, the environment of, like, a, you know, a ranch or a farm where the horse, or the, like the stables, um, basically like helping with, with keeping things clean and, <clears throat> or as clean as can be, uh, in the, in the horse world. Um, we could look it up, uh, just for, for fun. Let's look it up. A comb with plastic rubber teeth used for grooming horses. Okay. I'm totally sh showing myself as a city slicker and uh, slightly embarrassing, but it is what it is. I just wanted to, sh to show you guys that, you know, just, I like to keep learning. You know, it's helpful. You know, even if it's something that I should know. I'm like, oh, I thought I knew this. Like, it's all right. You look it up. Try to file it away. If you forget it, next time you see it, look it up again. You know, maybe you'll eventually remember it. So, uh, but yeah. Curry combing is basically a comb that, you know, combs, like, grooms horses, um, apparently. And rubbing down his horse, but at the same time stole his oats and sold them for his own profit. Uh, so the horse can't, you know, speak a language. The horse, you know, you're stealing a horse's oats. So that's probably going to upset the owner of the horse um, or the owners of the horse because they are probably the ones that, that fed the horse and, and paid for the food and all that stuff. Um, alas, oh, the horse does talk uh, in this one. Well, animals talk in a lot of these, but you know I'm not going to make that assumption um, in in uh, in this in this uh, story until until the next sentence when I see it. So the first sentence I, I wasn't sure, but now it's like okay, there he's talking again. Alas, said the horse, if you really wish me to be in good condition. You should groom me less and feed me more. So the way I look, the way that this looks is this, it reminds me a lot of um, like the morale of a company, um, like an employer-employee relationship, you know, any sort of hierarchical relationship where someone is dependent on someone else, even like a child and a parent or a child and a guardian. You know, it's essentially that, that, uh, you know, I don't want to say underling, but that like, um, that sort of subordinate, you know, um, you know, is speaking up and saying, look, you should feed me more if you want me to be in my best condition and be of the greatest value as the greatest asset to what we're doing here to you know executing your plan you know or executing what what you know what what you're you're looking to to execute with with our relationship and with my role in this relationship etc so i think employer employee is definitely a good analogy but it, it can be any sort of subordinate and uh and superior relationship uh you know it's important because food, clothing, and shelter are essential. You know, it's, um, you know, you've got, you know, like Maslow's uh, pyramid of needs, you know, um, you know, and, and I think everyone knows that food is just essential for survival and, and to be in good, good condition and good, good spirits. So this horse is, you know, speaking what a lot of folks who are mistreated or mis- malnourished or you know uh under underfed undervalued i mean it could even be an analogy for being un underpaid like grossly underpaid um for the market conditions etc um like for for the market what the market will will bear as an example um but yeah if you really wish me to be in good condition you should groom me less and feed me more i hear uh i hear a strike uh, coming from this horse. But yeah, the horse and groom. Thank you very much.